Well, you might think that to start a partnership firm, there has to be some kind of a paperwork or at least some kind of documentation. And in India, we all hate to go to government offices. As to do any kind of documentation, it always takes so much time there. Well, obviously, there is some paperwork and documentation involved in registering a partnership. But it's only at your option to do it. What? Really? Can I skip all the paperwork? Yes, you can skip all the paperwork. In India, the option to register a partnership firm is completely left on the partners. So partners may decide to do all the paperwork and work as a registered partnership firm or skip all the paperwork and work as an unregistered firm. But I would suggest not to skip the paperwork as an unregistered firm suffers some key critical disabilities. So in the following video, we would study how to register a firm. Remember, registering is optional. What happens if few changes happen after registration? Like after registration, a new partner comes in or a partner retires. And finally, we'll study what are these key critical disabilities if we do not register the firm. So let's start by knowing the process of registration. To register, first we have to file an application for registration with the prescribed fee to the registrar of firms. Now who's this registrar of firms? So registrar is a person appointed by the government. Government systematically appoints different registrars for different areas. They have the responsibility to maintain a register. All the name of the firms present in this register is called registered firms. And so our goal is to get our firm's name in this register through the registrar of our area. For doing that, we need to provide him with an application form and prescribed fee. The application form should contain the following information. One, the firm's name. Second, the principal place of business. Third, the name of its other places of business if we have any branches. Fourth, the date of joining of each partner. Fifth, names in full and permanent address of the partners. And sixth, the duration of the firm. So if you carefully observe out of the six points, two points relate to the partner. Look at point number four and five. They relate to the partner and the remaining four points relate to the firm. The aforesaid statement is to be signed by all the partners or by their agents specially authorized in this behalf. Now what happens if some partner could not or is not signing the application form? In such a case, that person would not be considered as a partner at all. Now when the registrar is satisfied that the requirements have been duly complied with, he registers the firm by entering the name in the register. And once that done, he issues a certificate of registration to us. So let's suppose that on 1st September, we filed the application to the registrar with the prescribed fee. On 16th September, he was satisfied with all the details and entered our name in the register. On 18th September, we got the certificate of registration. Now, if someone asked me, hey, what date is your firm registered on? What should be my answer? Should it be 1st? Should it be 16th? Or should it be 18th? Our date of registration is 16th. The date our name starts to appear in the register of firms. Not our application date, nor the certification date. So that was all about how to register. Now let's look. Once we are registered, what happens when some changes happen? Well, broadly, there are two types of changes. First, a change that requires a fresh registration. And second, a change that requires intimation to the registrar about the change. 
so once we are registered firm now there is a change let's say there is a change in the name of the firm or the principal place of the firm this is a major change and hence a new registration is required let's keep in mind that this is the only change that requires obtaining a fresh registration all other changes require just intimation to the registrar let's look at the summary table so change is the intimation required and intimation by whom so let's say there is a change in our branches few new branches open up or few branches gets closed is there an intimation required yes there is an intimation required who has to give this intimation any partner or agent of the firm can give the intimation now let's look at the second type of change there is a change in the name or the address of the partner not the name of the firm but the name or the address of the partners of the firm so what has to be there is there an intimation required yes the intimation is required and who has to give the intimation any partner or the agent of the firm the third change there is a change in the constitution that means some partner is admitted or some partner is retired is the intimation required yes the intimation is required and who has to give the intimation in case of admission of a partner any partner can give the intimation but on retirement the leaving partner should be liable to give the intimation to the registrar fourth change well when minor becomes major he has a decision to join the firm or not to join the firm well is the intimation required yes the intimation is required if he joins the firm or even if he does not join the firm and who has to give the intimation any partner or the agent of the firm can give the intimation if any partner willfully signs any document he knows to be false he shall be punishable with a fine or jail up to 3 months or both 